Welcome to part 11, where we start on the electronics of the Blue Rolls Voron 2.4 350 millimeter kit. We start by attaching the DIN clamps to the electronics. Um, I'm using a Spider version 1 board here, and the standard kit actually doesn't come with uh, uh, the DIN clamp connector for this. And so I added a link to the post where you can go download this from Thingiverse where someone else actually designed one. And so here I'm adding uh, the two clamps. Uh, they're two different colors because I ran out of filament. And we'll simply attach the board using these M3 screws. The kit comes with a metal clamp for the SSR, and so here I'm simply attaching it with M4 screws. Some people have chosen to replace this SSR with one that uh, can take a higher amperage load, but at 10 amps, it actually can handle 50% more than the plate will draw, so we should be okay. At this point, just go ahead once complete and finish the Pi and the large power supplies as well. So we're going to be installing uh, the heater and the thermistor uh, to the print head. And uh, this also implies I'm going to finish off um, or complete the construction of the print head. Um, start by installing the thermistor and then tight, tighten the small Allen bolt just enough to hold it in. Then we're going to go ahead and install the heater as well. And this takes, of course, the larger bolt that's already there, and we'll tighten that a bit. And again, it doesn't take too much and just enough to hold it firmly. We don't really want to clamp down or destroy either the sensor or the heater or, frankly, the heating block itself. Notice I've also um, added the tie wrap uh, to the part cooling ducts. So here I'm doing a test fitting and uh, checking to make sure this all will fit properly and I can route the cables as I expect to. And now I'm using the bolt to attach the hot end uh, directly to this print head. Notice the small piece of PTFE tubing. Um, I push it in, it's flush um, against the back of the print head. That said, it doesn't really tell you anywhere in the manual um, how long to cut this. I cut this to 26 millimeters based on my measurements, and then I took a little bit of sandpaper just to clean up the ends and just to touch it up a little bit in terms of proper height to make sure it fits. With that attached, uh, I can route the wires and then use the tie wrap to uh, tighten these down. Nice and tight. Don't want them moving or getting in the way of anything. And uh, I won't trim the wires now. I'll wait till later uh, once this is all installed on the printer and I work in this area of the printer for the wiring. And here I'll just trim the ends of the tie wrap, make sure it stays out of the way. And then complete assembly of the print head. So now we'll start mounting the electronics. Um, here's the power supply with the clips attached that we 3D printed. Um, placing it here in this position 
So it's close to where I expect the 110 voltage to come in. I am going to try and keep those wires as small as possible. It's also close to the bed heater, which also runs on 110 voltage. Again, I'm going to try and keep those as short as possible. I also install the SSR, and here I'm installing the Spider controller board as well. And again, hopefully I'm setting up in a way so to make the wiring as easy and as short as possible. And I've installed the Pi with the Ethernet and USB ports facing out the back, and hopefully that also aligns. I've decided to purchase a wiring harness. Uh, I'm convinced it'll save me a huge amount of time when wiring this. And so here it is. It looks beautiful. The Blue Rolls kit came with a small 5 volt power supply for the Pi, but we won't be using it. We'll be powering it straight from the spider board. I'll also be using this wiring guide that's published in GitHub that describes all the electrical connections to the spider and power. I'm pulling the wiring harness through um, from the top side to the back side here, and so I can start my connections. And again here, checking with the guide, I've decided to reorient my spider <laughs> uh, to help eliminate any errors in wiring, and this way it appears exactly as it does in the picture. Here I'm checking to make sure all the jumpers align with uh, the green jumpers on the wiring diagram. And I'm making a few adjustments here to make sure these are both in sync. And these three are just all out in the wrong place. So I'm pulling them out and pushing them back in the proper positions. And now we'll install the motor drivers. Um, they appear these little chips. They really only go in one way, but be careful you don't force them otherwise. There's two extra pins across one end, and so they really can only go in one way unless you could decide to destroy these. And so be a little gentle. They may require a little bit of rocking and a little bit of realignment to get, make sure all the pins are seated properly. Um, go through these one by one. Um, you'll end up with one left over, so you have a spare in case one burns out. I'm cleaning the tops of these, the metallic pads with isopropyl alcohol. Uh, we're going to be installing or sticking on cooling fins, and I want to make sure they make really good contact, stick really well, so they keep these as cool and long-running as possible. And now we'll electrically connect the Z stepper motors to the drivers. Using the cables that came with a kit, we start at the right front motor and plug it in according to the diagram. And then the left front motor, again, according to the diagram. And this is the left rear, and make sure you do the right rear as well. And now we start connecting the wire harness. These are all labeled really nicely and come with this guide that's um, adhesively backed so we can attach this to the bottom permanently. And I'm simply going through and uh, connecting these um, one by one. I started here um, with uh, uh, the uh, thermistors for um, the nozzle, as well as the heater for the nozzle. And I'm just simply going through and connecting as many as I can, not trying to put as little thought as possible into it. Um, there's a few I'm going to wait till later until I make the connections on the top side of the printer. Because to be honest, I'm a little bit confused as to where um, or how some of these should fit in. But for the most part, it's easy. So far, the wires are not arranged really nicely. Um, I'm going to have to go through later and do this um, properly. 
but uh, to eliminate some of the rat's nest of wires that's going on here, I'm unplugging a few cables, um, reorganizing a little bit, and plugging them back in. And so for the heater and the part cooling fan connections, again, they're pretty clearly labeled with their trusty guide. And uh, check twice before you plug these in. Um, because I just plugged one of these in the wrong place. And as I pulled it out, I broke the cable. So I had to cut this off and attach a new connector, unfortunately. Um, and again, just go through um, following the chart, the labels on the cables, um, as well as that graphical diagram that I showed you on my laptop a little bit earlier. This is really quite straightforward. So here I'm installing the bed thermistor. And um, these are the wires I pull through from the front side through the back hole. Um, here I trim the wires to size. Um, I'm stripping the ends, twisting the individual strands so I can put a JST connector on. And here you can see why it really paid to buy that wiring harness. Um, the majority of the cables <laughs> are terminated. Um, it would have taken me days more time to get all these wires terminated properly. Um, this just takes time, which is rather unfortunate. I'm sure there's others that can do it quicker than me, though. And here, finishing off the cable with the plug. And after all of that, just plug it in. So now we're going to connect the Raspberry Pi to power. Um, the Blue Rolls kit came with this connector all pre-wired and ready to go, which is really nice, with heavy-duty cables as well. And so another one I don't have to make. And it simply plugs into the spider board according to the diagram, and you get power. You could turn this into a data connection as well if you enable the port and software. And now we install the motor driver heat sinks. The heat sinks themselves are self-adhesive. Um, there is some backing paper you've got to take off. Um, but it's pretty simple. Pull off the paper and stick it on firmly. And we just repeat this over and over until we get them all complete. So our wiring is just getting messier and messier, and we need some kind of a wire mount. So it turns out I printed one of these, an extra one of these um, DIN connectors by mistake, rail connectors. And I'm thinking here, this might make a pretty nice place, at least for now, for me to tie wrap some cables. Um, I'm going to end up printing a few more of these. Um, this may end up being a final solution to help with some of the wiring here. But here you can see how nicely this actually works. And now we're wire the SSR and the bed heater. We 
we start, of course, by loosening the screws on the low voltage side. And here I'm connecting um, the positive and negative um, from the bed heater terminals on the spider board to the negative and positive on the SSR. And this essentially um, will be our big electronic switch to connect 110 to the bed heater. Um, here I've taken the thermal fuse. The ends are actually already pre-stripped. And here I'm adding a barrel connector. And um, I've also trimmed uh, the wire um, coming from the bed, which I will connect right here. And so this will allow me to have one side um, of the electricity that's going into the plate uh, protected by that fuse. If the fuse breaks, the plate shuts off. So here I'm actually connecting one end of that fuse um, to the SSR or the relay. And so 110 voltage will drive right through that to the heat plate. So here I'm connecting another barrel connector to the other end of the heat fuse. And that goes into the plate. And with this crimp, um, one of the wires um, is now complete. And here I'm connecting the other wire coming out of the plate to the power. And I'll connect the other end of 110 uh, directly to the SSR relay, which finishes the circuit. One of the wires going into the plate, the heat plate, is connected to the relay through the thermal fuse. And the other side is connected directly to the power, where in the end, where I'm connecting on the power supply here, will be connected directly straight to the 110 line. Um, in this case, uh, the power supply is not actually providing the power. This is just a termination point. I've also reused um, scrap cable that I've trimmed off the plate. It looked like a really nice, thick, heat resistant. Um, I'm going to change this later on, um, but I've decided to at least color one line just to make sure it's clear. If you found this video uh, to be helpful, please click subscribe. And thank you very much for watching.